Hi, are you at a point in your life where woodworking as a career begins to make sense? Do you want to convert your woodworking passion into self-employment? Do you have the motivation and ambition to drive an income exclusively through uh, woodworking? Do you have the support to be self-sufficient in woodworking? Are you willing to take risks to achieve the goal of being self-employed? Are you confident in your woodworking skills? I'm Norman Pirolo, a woodworking business entrepreneur. Woodworking has been my passion for over 30 years. I've been stoked about woodworking today as when I began in 1994. So from part-time to uh, full-time woodworking, I delved into many aspects of uh, woodworking along the way. From box maker to wood sculptor to uh, my current role as a furniture maker, the experience gained has been invaluable to me. I hope to inspire you today on earning a living from your woodworking, so stay tuned. I'm Norm Perolo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So today I, I build furniture on spec at Perolo Design and share my woodworking and furniture making knowledge through online courses, classes and books at uh, Wood Skills. You can see the paths I've followed over a three decade period. From the small beginnings and a part-time business I grew into other forms of woodworking, namely jewelry boxes, wood art, sculpture and finally contemporary furniture, which is what I create today. The woodworking educator role began in earnest in 2012 after following a year-long small business course. Also shown are the uh, logos I developed over the years. Logos are critical in branding your business. With my background in both woodworking and business, I enjoy sharing my experience on the topic of woodworking as a living. So, initially I launched two part-time uh, woodworking uh, businesses while working day jobs to minimize the risk of losing my, my work income. I stress this point. It minimizes any risk of deriving income solely through woodworking. As a part-time endeavor, your employment income can finance the necessary tools and equipment to get your business going. So this is what I did and later dropped my career and focused entirely on woodworking. And I'll uh, elaborate further on that, on that path. So I struggled with a decision early on, but I never looked back. It was difficult not to get a paycheck, and this is something to consider in your own situation. So self-employment brings you a satisfaction and fulfillment. Working at something you enjoy is very rewarding. Initially, I began part-time woodworking while working a, a day job. Doing woodworking part-time as a business minimizes the risk of losing a regular income. So once established, I spent as much time working on my business than on my, my day job. I then decided to let go of my day job and focus entirely on woodworking. My commissions increased since then and I've never looked back. Being self-employed brought and continues to bring satisfaction and fulfillment to my life. Working at something you enjoy will bring you a success and a rewarding career. I'm shedding a positive light on the journey of earning a, a living as a woodworker, although I expect to have setbacks and to be able to power through them and I'll uh, elaborate further on that on the, the ups and downs, upsides and downsides of uh, running your own or being self-employed in a business. So an interesting aside, when I was woodworking part-time I hardly ever discussed my day job anymore. Conversations revolved around my woodworking and my furniture making so this is what excited me. 30 years after my first business the excitement of woodworking continues so if you're as passionate as I was and still am, you have this to look forward to. So career change is common today and it's not unusual for someone to reinvent themselves, in this case to a self-employed woodworker, which is what I've done. It is important to follow your passion in life. Do you give thought to striking out on your own as a woodworker? How often have you wondered or dreamt about earning a living from your woodworking passion? 
I experienced this about 25 years ago and was torn between a uh, high-tech career and a career at woodworking. So you could be in a rut with your existing career and no longer derive satisfaction from it or you're simply out of work. Creating furniture, cabinets or wood objects can be appealing. Doing this for a living, either part-time or full-time, is very rewarding and satisfying. Creating tangible objects such as furniture or cabinets provides a satisfaction and enjoyment. You will be able to see the fruits of your labor at the end of each day. And this is what motivated me to do woodworking. I was able to uh, create, depending on my era, the era of woodworking, I was saying, either jewelry box or furniture, and had the satisfaction of seeing a tangible object at the end of the day, unlike my former career, software, where software is, uh, you can have your whole career in one CD or one DVD. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's an old saying. I'd also like to talk about these uh, scale models that you see here. These are uh, scale models I use uh, predominantly in my furniture design class that I teach, either uh, live or online. So I developed these to demonstrate uh, how critical it is to create mock-ups or maquettes of a piece of furniture to, uh, for the client or the recipient of the, of the furniture, the commission, to better visualize what the, uh, what the furniture would look like. So they're both decorative and functional. In this case, the drawers operate and the, uh, this is a, almost a true to scale, fifth scale if I'm not mistaken, of a, of a cabinet outstanding. This is more of a between a third and a quarter scale. It's more functional than, uh, than that version. So this has functional drawers that actually uh, work like drawers. <laughs> and the doors, and uh, so it's actually, uh, so I've actually built both of these pieces as furniture pieces. So the customers are always impressed with with viewing this, I think uh, they can much better visualize what their furniture would look like. So I thought I'd mention that. So this is the type of work I, I currently create. Uh, cabinets outstand in this uh, in these designs. So unlike other career choices in woodworking, you measure your productivity through the amount of work you create. As you develop techniques and workflow improvements, your productivity will increase. The same time as money will begin to make sense as you develop your woodworking business. Earning a living through woodworking will motivate you to improve your woodworking skills and techniques to produce higher quality work. With competitiveness in mind, a quality product has an advantage over a competitor's product. Since businesses are competitive in nature, you develop techniques and efficient processes to increase productivity, which translates to increasing your yield. Or if you work in small batches, creating batches much quicker, creating larger batches of furniture in less time. So these processes increase the yield from your woodworking and improve competitiveness. This is how I developed my jewelry box business. I began doing one, one piece at a time and then eventually worked in small batches and the small batches were progressively, grew progressively larger and larger in quantity until I think I peaked at 18 to 20 uh, jewelry boxes at a time. So I would create components for and then uh, small batches for, uh, that were interchangeable between the boxes. And this, this uh, significantly increased my uh, yield of, uh, of, of my output of my jewelry boxes. So as time goes on, you will complete orders in less time, a natural evolution of a woodworking business, and that's the example I just gave. I was able to produce uh, more jewelry boxes in less time and maintain the quality, which is, uh, which is an important point. So over time, you will appreciate uh, the choice you to derive your income from uh, woodworking. Being self-employed will provide you a sense of uh, pride and confidence. The freedom to be able to make your own business decisions cannot be emphasized enough. You have freedom uh, in self-employment, unlike working for uh, in a large company or working for an employer. So although it is overwhelming to learn the many aspects of running a business as well as seeking orders or commissions for your work, you will get comfortable with this over time. The downside to all this is that you let go of a regular source of income, your paycheck. A day job provides stability and a regular source of income without the need to worry about supporting yourself. And this is a, this is a significant downside until you're, you're, you've established your business. And I had these doubts and uh, trepidation early on in the first few years of my business about having let go of a lucrative, fairly lucrative career 
and switched to something that was not quite lucrative at the time, but eventually did become sustainable as a business. So if you get little to no satisfaction from your work, investigate the idea of becoming a part-time or full-time woodworker. In my life, I've experienced downsizing and loss of employment on three occasions. So I bounced back, but eventually switched to woodworking full-time. And I talk about this in my in other presentations. I'm a former, my former career in high tech and how I experienced uh, three, uh, three downsizing. And I also talk about that as, uh, in this book, specifically from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey available at woodskills.com. So this experience motivated me to earn my living through woodworking and to rely on myself for an income. Being self-sufficient is the uh, life lesson you carry with you throughout your life. Guaranteed secure jobs have become a thing of the past. I think we all know this or realize this by now. The often reduced and irregular income that is part of being a self-employed woodworker is well worth it. Being in business for yourself it involves more than just woodworking, however. There are other aspects of the business you need to consider. Other aspects include client interaction, accounting, inventory control, equipment and tool maintenance, purchasing, marketing, advertising, and shipping. This takes valuable time away from your woodworking, but it's necessary for your business to survive and thrive. Self-employment and woodworking is very rewarding. A key to being successful on your own is having confidence in yourself. Being confident will move you forward. You develop the confidence over time as, your, as the quality of your product improves and you begin to market your product and you make some sales, it automatically translates to more confidence in, in yourself and your work. Along with that, skepticism is your enemy. Minimize the fear and insecurity of starting your own woodworking business. Have faith in yourself and your capabilities and this will offset the possibility of any setbacks. And this again is acquired over time. Initially, you'll have all these, uh, you'll have the skepticism and doubts in your mind, but over time they, they go away and your, uh, your, your confidence increases and your faith in your business increases. So you might experience doubt from people that surround you, doubt as to whether you, uh, you will succeed. Some people will go on about how difficult it is to succeed at your own business. These are likely people that have never taken the leap to strike out on their own. Don't listen to them. Follow your passion, follow, follow what you feel is right. I experienced doubt at the very beginning of my first woodworking business. I had more questions than answers at the time and every little step to self-employment was an adventure of its own. So I'll, I'll briefly talk about a business plan. A business plan cannot be emphasized enough. You do need a business uh, plan uh, to guide you in your, in your business as a, uh, a self-employed woodworker. A business plan is an important roadmap for your new career as a woodworker. A business plan keeps you from deviating to unproductive business directions. If you're unsure whether you should start your woodworking business, within one year of starting my first woodworking business, I had absolutely no regrets. I told myself that I would have instead regretted not starting the, the woodworking business. Some takeaways from this talk. Avoid feeling overwhelmed. Pace yourself and plan the hours in your day. Mix up woodworking tasks over different days to avoid boredom. One person business involves multiple tasks. Explore methods of simplifying and streamlining tasks. This will provide you a more likelihood of completing the task. Explore efficiencies in your business, streamline products, to refine your niche, select products or furniture that sustain your business. Try to limit the, uh, the scope of your business initially. Try to market fewer products and, just, and find out what, what sells or what markets and then possibly focus on that product. Develop a management system and processes that work for you. Don't neglect a uh, healthy work-life balance. This is critical, especially if you have a family or it's important not to spend 24 hours, 24 seven at your business and spend some time with the family. And this will, uh, it's because it's healthy. And this is uh, it's a well-known fact nowadays. And people are, uh, businesses are promoting the uh, healthy work-life balance. So I'll allocate time for, uh, for creativity, design, and marketing, it is not necessary to complete everything in one day. Spread tasks out. Now, when I refer to creativity and design, this is designing new products, invoking your creativity to create possibly new furniture or new wood objects to market, uh, explore new, new uh, designs and new, uh, new paths in woodworking. If, uh, if your current path is not working out for you. So as a woodworker, creativity, 
drives your marketing and successful marketing in turn drives your creativity. It's a feedback loop and I've discovered this. So creativity will drive you to create better products, more quality products and the successful marketing and sales in turn will drive your creativity. It works. So I hope you enjoyed this, this talk on, uh, on, on woodworking as a living or becoming a self-employed woodworker. I do offer uh, more information on this in, uh, in this book, Start Your Own Woodworking Business. It's also an online course I offer at woodskills.com along with other books and I can give talks on, uh, on, on, on business. Uh, I've had uh, considerable education in starting a business and running a business. I've actually studied for close to two years on, on running businesses, developing uh, a business plans and marketing plans for businesses. So I'm uh, fairly knowledgeable and I can, I can help you if you want one-on-one -on -one advice or, uh, or as a small group. And this book, uh, this book and the online course on starting your own woodworking business will guide you and elaborate further on what I've, uh, what I've discussed today. Thought I'd mention that. So enjoy your, your, uh, your self-employment and woodworking.